That guy probably had a fiberglass rod. Mark has fiberglass rod, and they both have the same year lane for cruisers. I think they know each other. No, I just think it's something that we've learned from this experiment that people that fish fiberglass rods also have lane cruisers. I don't think Mark realizes how serious we were going to take his question about the differences between the 1970s fiberglass rods and the new fiberglass rods that everybody's now getting excited about again. Um, so what we did is we took one of our lunch hours, me, Matt, and Jake, and uh, we went to just about every antique store that we knew of in Great Falls. You got a lot of glass. First four that we went to, we didn't find any fly rods at all for sale other than one bamboo rod. But when we went to um, Jack Club Antique Mall, we actually found a number of them. And Craig, um, who was working there at the at the Antique Mall, was actually really informative about fiberglass fly rods. And we found two for sale at the time, and he said he had more in the back room. But the two that we bought that day was a Wrights McGill, um, an Eagle Claw Sweetheart, eight and a half foot, and a Sears Roebuck that had a original um, automatic reel on it still that actually awesome. still works. Um, so what we want to do is bring those out here as well as some of the newer age fiberglass rods that are coming out today from Echo and some of the new brands and make some comparisons of what we think the differences might be. I don't know if we should really cast rods until this storm goes away with Matt. <laughs> that was close! <laughs> oh, that was... Not casting the rods. <laughs> So the storm is starting to pass over and lighten up, so I think we start casting the older fiberglass rods and we'll start with the Sears rod. No, it is a different, well it's a, it's, I don't think the fiberglass is that much different, but I think the pre-preg material, the way that they make it is different. Or just the reel, or the way the cork shape is designed, like I almost feel like this cork is upside down, but compared to what I'm used to or today's fly rods, but like. It definitely feels really heavy. So I definitely would want to try this with a, like a more traditional, like today's reel to compare them. So overall, we weren't super impressed with how the Sears rod casted, so let's move on and test the Eagle Claw. Made by Wrights McGill in Denver, Colorado. That's pretty cool. Well, that, isn't that a, a new meets old, old uh, 1970s look? A Nautilus Large Arbor on a Eagle Claw, Wrights McGill. Ooh, this thing feels way better. Yeah, that thing feels, this rod feels pretty nice, other than the grip is enormous. The cork on this rod is about the size of the cork rings when they first come off. <laughs> it's like not very sanded down. And we'll just sand this a little bit. Pretty wide grip. <laughs> so I'd say grip has changed a lot. This might be my new carp fishing rod. Yeah, I, this is a much different deal. This is a much nicer rod than that Sears rod to me. So that wraps up the older fiberglass rods. So let's move on to some of the newer glass rods out there on the market. And I think we'll start with one of the Echo glass rods. I'd say that it has a nice smooth feel. Um, it feels lighter, the grip shape's nicer. Uh, feels light, but I wouldn't say it feels drastically lighter than the, um, than the Eagle Claw one. It feels way lighter than the Sears Roebuck one. So for our last test, we're gonna use a custom fiberglass rod. 
Yeah, this rod to me loads the line the best out of the rods that we had, and that could be mostly just because this line is right for this rod. But this has a really smooth, buttery feel, this rod does. Okay, after casting a bunch of these different rods, what I really think um, are the major differences to point out between some of the rods that we found from the 1970s and some of the newer rods that are coming out today is like, for one, they feel much lighter. And I think um, a few reasons for that is just the componentry that's coming out today feels a lot lighter. I'm not sure if the blank's lighter or not. Um, I think the, the handles are shaped much nicer. I think a lot of the builders of newer fiberglass rods are, are very talented. Um, not to say they weren't before, but I think that game has gotten elevated. Um, and um, a lot of these rod companies are now marketing the newer glass as fast glass, unilateral, unilateral glass. And I would say that, you know, I'm not sure how much faster the glass is, but it does feel lighter in the hand. And that could be just because we have some better matches with lines here today. But I'm not 100% sure, so what I think we should do is go to Cameron from the Fiberglass Manifesto, who's pretty much single-handedly um, kind of... Uh, rejuvenated the fiberglass um, rod industry and see what he has to say about it. So it is 4 a.m. I'm headed to the office to interview Cameron with the Fiberglass Manifesto. He's on the East Coast, so the time change means we're waking up real early here in Montana. You there? Hello. How's it going? It's going well. How are you doing? Let me turn my volume up. All right. So on to our customer question. So Mark asked us what is the difference between new fiberglass rods and the fiberglass rods from the 70s? Well, the, I would say there's advances in the resins that are used and the, the glass that used to be there was a lot of e-glass used, which was a lower modulus than what you find out there now, which is, you know, a lot of the rod builders are using S-glass. There's still a lot of e-glass being used. Uh, and there's a better understanding of how tapers are made and what makes a good fly rod. Um, there are some phenomenal fly rods from the past, uh, but, you know, I would say my interest falls more in contemporary rods because, you know, if I go out and spend four or five or six hundred dollars on a fly rod, if it breaks or if there's something that happens to it, it gets lost, it gets stolen, I can replace that rod. You can spend that same four or five, six hundred dollars on a one of a kind, it doesn't pop up on eBay, it doesn't pop up on the fiberglass fly rodders form very often, and if it's broken, lost, or stolen, you're out of luck. You know, you can't get a, a tip made for it. You can't, you know, go find that fly rod again as easily. Um, but there's some great vintage rods. And I tell, you know, I tell everybody, if you're just wanting to figure this out, get on eBay. You can snap up some, you know, there's a lot of 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 weight rods uh, that are there that you can get for, you know, 20, 30, 40, $50. Uh, you can figure out what you like, don't like, and then you can build from there. So that does it for episode 23 of Ask North 40. Um, make sure to check out our podcast where you can catch our full interview with Cameron. And learn more about the Fiberglass Manifesto. Awesome. Uh, if you're interested in getting any new fiberglass rods, you can definitely find them at north40.com. Um, also, just a big shout out to Cameron over there at Fiberglass Manifesto. He really helped us put this show together. Um, also, Craig at the Jack's Club Antique Mall here in Great Falls. Um, Craig. He was he's, super helpful. And he's got more uh, older antique fiberglass rods waiting for you if you're interested. How was that? Good job, Matt.